Um, I'm changing the theme a bit. I'm here to talk about infrastructure. And uh, specifically, I'm here to talk about the Wikimedia infrastructure. So for those that um, you don't know about Wikimedia, we're um, the foundation behind um, the Wikipedia um, encyclopedia. Uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with it. And I'm going to describe how uh, it works on the back end. So I'm going to start first with some uh, basic design principles that we uh, have in mind whenever we design infrastructure. So the first one is we operate at scale. This is a weekly graph of page views. Um, you can see that desktop is the blue line and the uh, mobile is the um, mobile, um, the green line. So as you can see, it's fairly massive uh, for most people. Um, so we're the first uh, we're a very large, uh, popular website. We have uh, about 500 million unique users per month, uh, accounting for 20 billion page views. At peak, we serve 190,000 HTTP requests per second. Um, Comscore thinks that uh, we're at the fifth largest website in the world. Um, we're not just static. Uh, we're more static than most other sites on the top five but we still have 80,000 active editors contributing more than uh, 40,000 edits per hour. Um, so uh, initially, Wikipedia was very massive in growth. Uh, it started doubling every few months. Nowadays, it's fairly static, which is good for us, uh, but it's still not completely predictable. So um, this is a graph back from December. Uh, the large spike you see there, that's a 35% spike, is Nelson Mandela's death, um, which Happens from time to time. Uh, there's been a few other incidents like that, uh, like the Pope, the new Pope, two times now, uh, Michael Jackson's death, and so on. Um, so obviously we're global in nature. Uh, we're, there's no such thing as, you know, it's night, it's 4 a.m., we can do a maintenance window and break stuff. Uh, we have traffic all day long. And we need to be up 24-7, and we also need to be fast as, um, Performance is directly related to user retention. Uh, we also need to be, stay relevant, and we also need to keep up with current industry trends, like uh, the growth of mobile traffic. So we, we deliver continuously, we deploy code uh, multiple times per week, and we use agile for practices um, on our software teams. Uh, our second principle is one of open source, uh, freedom, and community and transparency. Uh, the Wikimedia movement is deeply rooted in the free culture and free software movements. Uh, we were born out of it. So our infrastructure is being built exclusively using open source components. Uh, we design and build in the open uh, with volunteers uh, together, not as uh, us and the community. Uh, everything is open for everyone to contribute. And as a free software project, as a free culture project, we have a fundamental property, which is the right to fork. So uh, if the Wikimedia Foundation goes evil one day, everyone should be able to fork the projects and start a new Wikipedia or a new um, Wikiversity or other project. So this includes content, um, which is, as you all know, free. This includes software. All of our software is free software. But this also includes infrastructure. So we'll build infrastructure as code, and we need to be able to release that. There is no secret sources involved in our um, infrastructure. So everything is open. Everyone is, everything is open. Uh, open for everyone to contribute. Uh, our third principle is one of limited resources. We are a non-profit, charitable, charitable organization. Uh, we're entirely funded by small donors. We don't run ads. We don't have uh, VC money. We're very small. Um, I have some numbers of our staff count back from 2007 when the foundation had less than 10 employees. And you can see t uh, today we have a bit more than 200, but not all of them are engineers. So compared to the rest of the top five, we're very small. Um, so uh, about our components, the basic components that uh, comprise our infrastructure. Uh, the physical topology, we don't use any third-party cloud provider or CDN. Uh, it usually involves secret sources. It's not always cheaper at our scale. And it, we have risks of uh, losing our autonomy um, we can't guarantee the privacy of our users, and we have the risk of censorship. So instead of that, we have a medium-sized infrastructure of our own, uh, about 1,000 servers. Uh, we, we host it in two primary data centers. Uh, the first one is in Ashburn, Virginia, in the United States. 
Uh, we have that since 2011. And um, the second one is we start, very recently started doing that in Dallas, Texas. And this replaces our old data center in Florida. Uh, the two data centers are uh, in very different areas, so very diff different physical threats, uh, different power grids, and uh, different vendors. Uh, in addition to those two, we have a number of uh, CDN-like caching pops. So we have one in Amsterdam, and we have one in San Francisco. Um, Amsterdam serves Europe, Middle East, Africa, and parts of Asia, and San Francisco um, serves the North America and West Coast, US and Canada, uh, Oceania, and the other half of Asia. So here's the map. Uh, the map was kindly uh, created by the RIPE NCC people using uh, a project called RIPE Atlas that spreads uh, probes all over the world. And this is the minimum latency, a visual representation of the minimum latency to our DCs. So blue is San Francisco. Um, you can see how it's the US West Coast and Asia and Oceania. Uh, green is Ashburn and uh, orange is um, Amsterdam. So our network, we also run our own network, uh, our IP network, uh, user facing and backhauling. Uh, we have 10G waves of, um, or dark fibers or MPLS and links between our POPs. Uh, we also have multiple 10Gs with tier one and tier two providers on each location to provide a better service to our users. And we are also present in multiple internet exchange points such as AM6 and Equinix Ashburn. Um, and we appear for free there, so everyone can get free knowledge. Uh, and unfortunately, this is one of the areas where our limited resources wins over our open source uh, ideology. So we have proprietary network hardware for switches and routers. Um, finally, our system architecture is mostly one server vendor, one or two use servers, no blades. Uh, it's all physical for now. Uh, we're exploring virtualization in various ways, containers or VMs. Uh, we're running Ubuntu Linux LTS releases everywhere, uh, the past three LTS releases. Uh, we use Puppet for configuration management uh, for a few years before other alternatives started popping up. Uh, it's about 60,000 lines of code right now and another 13 templates. So it's very, very difficult to migrate to something else, even if you wanted to. Uh, we do use Salt. Uh, for remote execution and orchestration and our deployment system. And we generally try to automate everything because manual labor is not as interesting. Um, so I'm going to describe the production architecture right now. Um, so first we have to load balance the traffic on the very basic layer of mapping users to data centers. Uh, to do that, we use a technique called GeoDNS. So we basically serve a different response to queries for in Wikipedia, for example, depending on where the user is coming from. Um, so if you're coming from Paris, you would end up in Amsterdam. Um, to do that, we use a software called uh, GDNSD. Um, we switched to it last year. It's very stable, very high performance. Um, it performs really well better than the competition, and it has features that the competition doesn't have, uh, like the deep uh, GIP integration using MaxMinds databases. Uh, because we have low TTLs on our infrastructure to be able to uh, do quick switchovers between data centers, and because we support an experimental spec called eDNS client subnet, we have a fairly high rate of DNS queries, about 9,000 per second at peak. Um, within the data center, we use, for load balancing, uh, Linux and, um, and a software that's called IPVS. It's in the kernel. So, LVS uh, has a mode that's called direct routing, in which responses go directly from servers to um, end users without going back through the load balancers. Uh, that, plus the fact that we use ordinary commodity servers, um, like simple 1U servers, means that it's cheap. It's very cheap to scale up uh, as the traffic grows. And um, for the availability part, we use a software called Pyball that we wrote in Python. Uh, it monitors backend servers, pulls them, depools them, um, and also maintains BGP with the routers so that uh, when the load balancer fails, uh, the router can redirect the traffic to another load balancer. And this has worked extremely well for us. Uh, one layer up, or multiple layers up, for load balancing HTTP requests and caching them. Uh, for starters, for HTTPS, we use Nginx to terminate SSL. 
within the data center. Uh, and then we have multiple tires of uh, daisy chain uh, varnish. Varnish is an HTTP cache and proxy. It's very high performance, generally very stable. Uh, it has a very powerful and efficient DSL that gets translated into C directly. And you can manipulate headers and do other um, things there. Uh, we have a custom director um, that's based off the uh, three uh, uh, 0.0 plus branch plus uh, some code of ours. One of that is the custom director um, that hashes the URLs using consistent hashing algorithm and shards the cache to multiple backend servers. So on the first layer, we have the varnish frontends. They route traffic to backends. Backends store in SSD uh, the responses. And uh, if they don't have um, the, ca the, the uh, response in cache, they can also use another backend in a different data center that's used in caching pops. Uh, unfortunately, the last bit, the persistent storage bit, is not as stable. It used to be um, on the PLAS branch. Now that branch is closed with uh, closed source with 4.0. Uh, behind Varnish, the main thing that we have is our app server stack. Uh, the main app server stack is basically a LAMP stack on steroids. Um, it's Apache 2.2, PHP 5.3, a few custom PHP extensions in C. Uh, we run MediaWiki, which we write as well. Uh, it's continuously evolving to our needs and continuously deployed. Uh, MediaWiki uses uh, aggressive caching on the back end as well. And one of the ways it does that is memcached. Uh, we used a twin proxy uh, from Twitter to um, load balance the memcached requests and uh, also have pipelining and better fault tolerance. So twin proxy runs locally on each app server, and MediaWiki connects on localhost for that. Uh, we have a small Redis uh, cluster as well for the job queue and a few other stuff, and we're expanding this, its use as well. On the um, Data store, we have MariaDB. Uh, we were using Facebook's MySQL fork and switched to it last year. Uh, we use aggressive, uh, aggressively read-only slaves to scale up our traffic, uh, to scale up masters and writes. We split uh, into a fairly num static number of shards. Uh, there are currently seven. And it depends on the language and project. So English Wikipedia is shard one, a few other Wikipedias are shard two, and so on. In general, it's a fairly small uh, setup, less than 100 servers. Um, and as a secondary data store, we use Elasticsearch. Uh, we're switching to it for um, search from our previous custom built service built on top of Lucene. Um, we have about 16 servers now with Elasticsearch. It's f so far, we're very satisfied with its scalability and fault tolerance characteristics. Um, on the side or back of the uh, app servers, we have um, some internal services as part of our strategy to move to a more service-oriented architecture. So these are multiple small services with a RESTful API that MediaWiki can use. Uh, the most prominent one is the new parser from Wikitext to HTML and back. It's called Parsoid. Um, it's still very small in traffic, though. Uh, the services are mostly written in, in Node.js, uh, 0.8 and 0.10. Uh, but this is not a set requirement, so we are evaluating our options there. And we have, we're planning for far more to come. Um, another uh, big part of our traffic is our media storage architecture. Uh, so we have mainly images, but also a bit of uh, audio and videos in media, Wikimedia Commons and all the projects. Um, this total raw storage is about 800 terabytes. Uh, the usable one is far less than that because of the replication factor. But the, this is fairly small in comparison. But the scalability issue here is mostly the quantity of files. So we have more than three, uh, 300 million files because of the thumbnails. And this is very hard to store and scale. Uh, we use um, OpenStack Swift for this. Uh, despite the scalability issues, we've been fairly happy with it. It's region aware. Um, it has a RESTful, well-defined API. And it's extendable using middlewares, which we use to interface with our scalers. Um, finally, I'd like to uh, say a few words about our production-like infrastructure. So we have a project called Wikimedia Labs. Uh, it's an infrastructure 
for staff and volunteers as equals developers or sysadmins. It's basically an OpenStack a private cloud. Um, it's VMs running on the production puppet tree, so with production manifests, but with some abstractions to remove passwords. And uh, we use it to develop, uh, experiment, um, run QA, and stage changes before they go to production. And it, it's part of our general strategy of being more participatory and open to um, contributions. So we also have an open um, code review system, um, an open backtracker, communication channels such as mailing lists and IRC. And anyone can contribute there. So everything I talked um, to you about today is all open. You can find the graphs online. Uh, you can um, participate in our development and operations as well. And uh, I'd be happy to answer questions for you in the hall. Uh, just uh, come and reach me, and thank you for your attention. Yeah. 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 Yeah.